our dear brother's death, the memory be green, yet so far hath discretion fought with nature, and we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state, have we, as for the defeated joy, with mirth and funeral, and with dirge and marriage, taken to wife. Nor have we here embarked your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along, for all our thanks. And now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some soup. What is it, Laertes? You cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes? That shall not be my offer, not thy asking. The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes? My dread lord, your leave and favor to return to France, from whence so willingly I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Uh, yet now I must confess that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again towards France. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, run from my slow leave by labors and petition, and at last I do beseech you give him leave to go. Take thy for our Laertes, time be thine, and thy best grace is spended at thy will. Hamlet and my son. A little more than kin and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on? Not so, my lord. I am too much of a son. Hamlet, Hamlet, cast thy night color off and let thine eye look like a friend Don Denmark. Do not forever with thy veil late seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowst tis common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Ay, madam, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems? Nay, it is. I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor the windy suspiration of forced breath, nor the dejected behavior in the visage. Together with all things, forms, mood shapes of grief that can denote me truly, truly. These indeed seem. They are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passeth show these but the trappings and suits of woe. Tis sweet. And commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these morning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father that father lost, lost his. Persevere in obstinate condolence, of course, of impious stubbornness. It is a manly grief. It shows a little most incorrect to heaven. We pray you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne. Your intense school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire, and we beg you beseech you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayer, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall, in all my best, obey you, madam. Why, it's a loving and fair reply. He has ourselves in Denmark, madam. Come. This gentle and enforced court of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. In grace for all, no joke and help that Denmark drinks today, but even the cannon to the cloud shall tell, and the kings rouse the heavens all through it again, for speaking earthly thunder. Come, away! Think on, sprout through thy name is woman! A little month, for everything she 
shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niles. Oh, tears. Why, she, even she, God, at least she wants discourse of reason more to mourn longer. Mary, my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. A little month, ere yet the salt of her most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her gallant eyes, she married. Oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart. I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see you well. Horatio, I do forget myself. The same, my lord, your poor servant I mother. Ah, but what made you an us not? How much ruined in my position, good my lord. I'm glad to see you well. I would not hear your enemy say so. But what made you an us not? Well, I'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray thee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. <laughs> what I had met, my dearest foe in heaven, Horatio, or ever I had seen that day. My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him all for all, I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. Seizing your admiration a while with an attent ear till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear. Two nights together have these gentlemen in the dead fast and middle of the night been thus encountered. A figure like your father, armed at point, exactly cap of pay, appears before them. Oh, the solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked by their oppressed and fear-surprised eyes within his truncheon's length, whilst he distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, stands dumb and speaks not to him. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part he did, and I with him the third night kept the watch, where both in time, form of the thing, each word made true and good, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But where was it? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to him? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. Yet, once me thought, it lifted its head and did address itself to motion as like it would speak, but even then the morning cock grew loud, and at that sound it shrunk in haste away and vanished from our sight. Tis very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. And we thought it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, indeed, sirs, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight? We, we do, do, my lord. lord. Armed, say? Armed, my lord. From head to toe? My lord, from top to foot. Then sign on his face. Oh, yes, my lord. He wore his beaver up. What I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Very like. Very like stayed along. While one with modern haste might tell a hundred. Longer. Longer. Not when I saw it. His beard was grizzled, no? It was, as I have seen in his life a sable silver. I will walk tonight. The chance to walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this, I let it be tremble in your silence still. And whatsoever else shall have tonight, give it an understanding, but no tone. I will require your loves. So tonight, upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. My duty to your honor. Her love is mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms? All is not well. I doubt foul play. Ah, oh, would the night were come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise. Though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. Mm -hmm.